Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 67th Unknown Comics Podcast. We've been doing this for two years now, if you can believe it. Mm -hmm. Um, We started in uh, January of 20. Yep. Because we were bored, and we needed something to do. And we killed all the Jedi last week. What? It was Order 66. Oh, my God. (laughs) We started in 2021, I thought. It's 2020. Three? Yeah, sorry. It's 2023. Yeah, so sorry. We started January 21. Yeah, you're right. So, oh, I know that because I got an uh, uh, announcement saying, hey, you you know, this many years ago, you hired Tanner. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that was all around the same time. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, if you are joining us live, uh, thank you for joining us live. And of course, this will live on in the. Uh, <laughs> Did the your pod- Does your wife know we're live, Darren? She's standing behind you. She doesn't. She <laughs> doesn't. Think Hi, Heather. <laughs> hey. We're live in front of an audience. Hey. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. Sixty seventh episode, getting good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll get started with our first segment. And that is, uh, what is going on at Unknown Comics, Chris? Uh, yeah, so uh, lots of different stuff happening here. One of our big things we still got going on is our uh, big Christmas bundle that, uh, of course, has got uh, a piece of original art you can win by Clayton Crane. That's still available on the website right now. Uh, it's only $100, and the bundle is absolutely amazing. Uh, and then, of course, the other big thing we have going on right now is, of course, our warehouse clearance sale. Crane, that's still uh, available on the oh, website right now. Sorry, hold on. Uh, we are trying to get... <laughs> well... We are trying to get rid of a lot of older stock, and uh, we're working on that right now. Uh, and so check out the Warehouse Clearance Sale collection on the website, and you'll see all kinds of really good stuff there. Um, there's a, I mean, we've got tons and tons of stock in there. Uh, Darren's been adding stuff. I've been adding stuff. Um, stock ratios, exclusives, all the goodies. So um, i trying to think of uh, other stuff we're getting ready for as we're watching Darren finagle everything and yeah. the screen. Trying to make a camera <laughs> As we hear everything hit the desk because you're not using a proper microphone. <laughs> you shut your mouth. This is... Hey, Darren, get some earbuds. They have a microphone on them. Did he get earbuds? No. He had uh, I was headphones. trying to use my, my headset. Hold on. Let me go turn my headset. I think my computer grabbed my headset. Oh. And turned it back off. All, All right. these excuses. Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you. Hey, you know. It's been a while, gentlemen. It's been a while. <laughs> Well, you've never actually remoted into the podcast. I was the only prior to this. I was the only one who had ever done that, and that was our very first episode because I had gotten sick right before mm-hmm. our first episode, and I think that was the only time that we actually, other than like having David come on, and uh, and do it, and do it with us. I'm going to mute you real quick, Darren, while you do all that schniz, so we don't hear nothing. Okay. While he's zipping a zipper. Yep. In front of the current microphone. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, that's pretty much it that's going on, huh? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, new exclusives launching every week, three to four new exclusives launching usually Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Uh, tomorrow we've got Star Wars Mandalorian 8, last issue of that. Big, big bundle going out for all eight issues. And then, um, yeah, that's that's what's rocking right now. And we lost. There's Darren. Darren's back. Hi, Darren's big finger. Hello. <laughs> I'm trying to get my damn headphones to work. They're not working. <laughs> damn it! Oh, oh. this is we're gonna co- we're gonna have you. Co- oh, the, what that, you had those the whole time? That is what I told you to use. <laughs> what the crap? But now he's gonna flip his phone over, plugging those in. <laughs> Gosh, miss you guys. This is a uh, great entertainment for anybody watching you know. right now. Hopefully, where's Hammer when you need him? He'd be roasting us like. Cr- He's crazy a, right now. He's over on uh, what not waiting for us to show up, probably. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we, we he's waiting on get... me to list my. He's waiting on me to list my bundles tonight, so I can, uh, so he can go crazy. Yeah. We uh, wait. I thought he was getting out of collecting. He kept a lot. You of never know with Hammer. Been buying those bundles every week or every night. Uh-huh. So, he has. There you go. I'm not telling his wife that if she's listening. So Darren, what time is your what time is your show tonight? Uh, I've got it scheduled for ten thirty currently. Eastern. So Eastern, yes. Okay. Okay. Is it, I, Eastern I'm not. Deals. 
I'm trying to get this. I guess no one's commented on Facebook yet. So. Yeah, no, no, the, no, we haven't had any really. The, the, yet. the chats are chats are rolling in. We're just we're just getting started. This is our first time back on these platforms in a long time, so it's going to take a little bit for for people to 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 find us again. So, all right. Well, that is. That is that because our, our our next our shows aren't starting until this uh, late winter, yeah. early spring. Yep. Um. So so, Darren's. Darren's We're going international crazy. this year. Yep. Yeah, I guess you. Well, you've been international. Mm-hmm. You've gone to Canada. No, we've been to we've been to Canada. Chris went to Singapore in December. That's true. Yeah, been to Canada twice. Singapore. You'll go to Mexico this year, right? Mexico next month. Or February, March, March. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. Inside of four weeks, I'll go to MegaCon or uh, Mexico and London. Mm-hmm. Yep. So looking at plane tickets today for London, and it's cheaper for us to fly to London than it is for Darren to fly to Amarillo. That is ridiculous. not by like a lot cheaper, like eight hundred dollars. That is ridiculous. What is yeah, wrong I can with I can city? fly, I can fly British Air. From Tampa to London for under three hundred bucks. If I go at like super economy, um, it costs me eight hundred dollars minimum to fly to Amarillo. That's stupid. <laughs> I hate yeah, and, now, and that's it, a it, nonstop it's not, it's flight. Not like, I mean, even just Dallas is still more expensive than it would be. It, to London. it has not, it has nothing to do with our airport. Yeah. Our airport would want cheaper fares anyway. It's just it's the airlines because there's yeah, it cost me six fifty to fly from. Uh, Tampa to Dallas round trip. So, yeah, maybe flying we, expensive. Here's the thing: maybe, maybe as Amarillo grows and more traffic comes through, because that's what it is. Is there's not enough traffic to validate the? There's not enough volume going mm-hmm. through our airport, right, to validate it. So maybe as we get larger, we've hit two hundred thousand. They say that's a that's like a watershed. So maybe maybe things will change. We've had been at two hundred thousand forever. Not officially. Not officially. Yeah. Estimated, yes. All right. Nobody cares about Amarillo. <laughs> Let's talk about So, uh, I will say something else going on in uh, Unknown Comics well, it is that is more recent thing that should be known um, is uh, the hire of a new general manager, um, Kevin. So, yeah. is that it? that's a big hire. Is it, are you elaborating on that more? No, oh, I guess I can. I mean, <laughs> basically with me living in Florida, um, it just gives us somebody there in Amarillo to help lead the charge, keep stuff moving, organized. Um, you know, it's a hire that we've needed for a long time. And uh, and just so everybody knows, the, the, the nepotism continues. It's another one of Darren's brothers. <laughs> What's another brother? What's Never mind. another brother? Two so. brothers, mom, two cousins. Yep. A s- weird sister in law. It's not my sister in law, but still technically it's related. Sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah. And a Brandon. Yeah. And a Brandon. All right. All right, Darren. Now what have you what have you been into this week? What have you been watching? What have you been Reading, now, keep, in, keep in mind our main topic, so maybe don't go elaborate too much. Yeah, on that, but well, what our main topic is about what we're excited, new stuff we're excited for later this year. So, yeah. uh, so uh, I've been working on trying to get back into the hobby of painting Warhammer. Yeah, we saw. So a lot of my time you, has been. We saw you moving your Tyranids around a little bit earlier there. <laughs> yeah, so I've been so painting Tyranids, spending more time at the hobby. Oh yeah, that's Earl Junior. <laughs> What is that? Um, is it a tyrant? Is it it's a, a winged hive, hive tyrant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I watched The Last of Us last night. That show was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I've heard people. And... That, I, I never played the game. I heard people that played the game are like, they said the first episode is like almost the exact beginning of the video game. Like, well, if that's the beginning of a video game, that's intense. Yeah. yeah. It was good. I didn't. I haven't watched it yet. It was really good. Hold this bigger. Hold on. I'm trying to make it bigger. Like I keep catching myself looking at the computer screen, looking for comments, and the 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 lips aren't moving, and it's like watching a bad dubbed movie. <laughs> at least he can't touch me. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, maybe. Chris, do it for me. No. Nope. 
He won't do it because he knows better. He's not on camera. Yeah. <laughs> no evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, so what do you think of Last of Us so far? Uh, I thought it was good. It was definitely an emotional episode. It definitely uh, caught you off guard. I expected to see more monsters. It was kind of like the beginning of Walking Dead. Like there just wasn't a whole lot of zombies in the beginning. Yeah. Not until like episode two. Um, so I would imagine this is going to be a lot like that. But the first episode it was good. Like an hour and a half or almost two hours, something like that. It's pretty long. It's long. But, yeah. I mean, that first bit where they really get you emotionally attached to that one character, you're like, and you know, like in the back of your head, that character is not going to make it. Like you just know. <laughs> But they're like, see, I didn't know. This I didn't know that. I did, I'd never played the game either, but I just had a feeling she because I knew I knew just from the promo who the girl is. I thought the main with. girl was a little white girl. Snow. I was yeah. assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Plus all so the... I know I haven't played the video game, but I know enough about the video game storyline to kind of know stuff. But I'm not going to get super spoilery. Yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah. So. Um, what's funny so really is, just for me it's building bugs and watching TV there you go uh, the, the fungus zombie thing mm-hmm. is an actual real thing yeah just not in, in like ants at like insect level yeah, yeah. so not, they, yeah they, they explain that at the very they actually the talk episode. oh do they okay. yeah. yeah to kind of give you an idea of like yeah this is a for real thing that already happens yeah but it just doesn't happen on a human scale cool alright well moving on Chris? So similar to Darren, in a way, uh, I've been uh, working on a lot of miniatures and stuff like that here lately. I uh, just got painting set up back in my office at the house we moved, and it's taken almost a full year for me to get that, but it's there now, so I've been painting some miniatures, putting some stuff together, um, trying to uh, get into MK4 of War Machine, figure it out, mm-hmm. and then um, some other board games as well, just kind of keep up with what's going on what's new um as far as tv shows going same thing last of us just watch that that was great i'm uh, excited for more of that you should watch it i i i will i just i'm i'm kind of binging some other stuff i'll get into here in a little bit so yeah. P- so i'm still trying to get through picard right um yeah which i know you're working on as well so um darren's seen most of picard i think you've seen the first two seasons right? only season one okay yeah, I just I just started season two, so yeah, so um, yeah, so watching that, um, of course, trying to finish the um, prequel to Witcher on Netflix. Oh, uh, the the blood blood, which is is as bad as people say it is. I, it's not. It's not really that it's that bad. It's a little slow, um, but it's definitely not to the same as like what the main Witcher show is. I would say. Um, but I think it's because it's trying to get everything done fast. They're not going to have multiple seasons of it. And so they're kind of jumping things here and there to kind of get to the story, the main points. So, so is this story arc, was this in the novel? <laughs> this is a, what, what the, was that? This is a whole. <laughs> I have a yawn. I thought I was going to cough. <laughs> this is a whole new uh, thing, but it's basically setting up. Uh, it's the first Witcher. Okay. Yeah. So it's all elves, the dwarfs. There's the the worlds haven't collided yet. None of that stuff. So gotcha. It's it's, it's getting to that point. You're gonna see the worlds most likely collide. Okay. So yeah, it's been pretty good though. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see a little bit more story again. That you know I've, I've gone through most of the novels, so I don't know if he's gonna write something or do something more around this, but yeah. I mean, I guess it's possible. So. Yeah. What about you, Brandon? My turn. So, uh, yeah. So I mentioned that uh, I finally, and I mentioned this last week, I I finally subscribed to Paramount Plus for the first time since it was CBS All Access. So I I started on Picard because I want to be done and ready uh, for season three. Um, And uh, and so I, I got season one done. And I liked it. I did not like the last episode. I felt the last episode, like they should have started the last episode. Like the last episode alone should have been 
part of the two part. You know, it was already a two part. <laughs> it should have been like a three parter. Um, you know, just it felt like like the pacing was too quick and yeah. and, and trying to get through the rest of the story too quickly. Yeah, and um and I'm sure like I just started season 2, so the big twist at the end with Picard, I don't understand why that was really necessary. Mm-hmm. Like I I'm trying to Oh, the giving to, him a new body? Yeah, like I just I like they could have just taken <laughs> that out, taken out the 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 whole terminal brain thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it still would have, the story would have worked. And yeah. so I don't, you know, I don't know. He's still going to be an old man. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like he got a new body, you know. Yeah. And then they. They could have saved it for season three. You could, you and then like, since that was the last season. Though, that they were going to replace him. And then. With James McAvoy. Have like a voiceover or something. It kind of seemed like that. That's what they <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Like what mm. they would have done though. Yeah. So I, I, it's, it's fine. I mean, it. But it just it seemed like a very inconsequential plot point uh, mm-hmm. to me. Um, but I can already tell you from just watching uh, episode one of season one, uh, I, I love seeing all the freaking starships yeah. again. Like, like Picard was unique, and I get it. You know that it was telling a, a different story. It wasn't a typical Star Trek story. But in season two, getting to see all the you know the new Stargazer and Excelsior and all those ships, and then you know. And, well, you, and you see him at the end of season one, too, when Riker brings the fleet in and everything. Yeah. You know, you see all the, just the BA ships. And that was good. I, I, I kind of went half mast on that one. So, uh, but, uh, so watching that, uh, Bad Batch started. So we watched the first two episodes of Bad Batch. Yeah. And I got episode four. I haven't seen it. Game of history. I need to watch that. Yeah. Um, or was it three? Was it three episodes or two episodes? First two came out, and then last week, and then this week. Okay. So it's actually four in. Four in. Yep. Um, you know, and the the main thing with Bad Batch that I'm waiting on is I'm waiting to see, and and I hope this is where they're going to tell exactly how the transition from clones to stormtroopers comes about. And it's hinted at it. Yeah, they've uh, had moments. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm ready to finally have that plot, you know, taken care of, um, and and actually mm-hmm. see what you know what finally convinces the Empire to. To, to flip over, right? I, I think you'll actually see that because you've only seen the first two. Yeah. The next couple episodes kind of hints more and more at the fact that clones are uh, defecting like crazy. Yeah. And you're actually going to see in the next episode a clone that everybody's had lots of questions about over oh. the last few years and uh, you'll actually get to see them a little bit. Okay. It wasn't Cody, was it? It is Cody. Oh, no, he was in the second episode. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. um, the third episode. I, he was I think there's that. only three episodes out because we watched two last week. So I think third episode came out this week. Commander Cody. Yeah. Yeah. So he was the one in Clone Wars that I was hung out with uh, Yoda, right? Yeah, he was on Dagobah. Yeah, he had the yellow trim. It kind of had like the little okay thing like this um, for our radio listeners. Yeah. <laughs> and they can't see me do what I just did with my hands. Um, yeah. Uh, and then as far as gaming goes, uh, I backed a Kickstarter mm-hmm. yesterday uh, for Marvel United. Um mm-hmm. Darren, so Darren's waiting on a Kickstarter to get here. Marvel Zombies, same company, Simon, or <coughs> Come On, whatever. Are oh, the minis like cool? It. Yeah, they're 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 like the little chibi, but there's just so many freaking characters. Like there's a lot. Like they're hitting like deep, deep characters. Like four star. The first the first right stretch there. goal character was Corsair, and then like three other star jammers, because that's how deep into the like. Space characters. They, they've already, they've already, because this is their third season. This is their third Kickstarter. So season one was like General Marvel. Season two was X Men. And then season three is like Kitchen Sink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't play okay. Season four. It's just yeah. everything right now. <laughs> but the cool thing is there is a nine inch Galactus that comes with it. So it's like a chibi version of Galactus. So zombies will have a zombie version. He's a super cute Galactus that's going to punch you in the face. He's he going to eat your planet. <laughs> <laughs> but they, That's you know, even though they are cheapy, like the box art makes them look a little like really, really cute. It, the actual physical models don't. It, yeah, they're, they're still chibi style, but they don't like. I would, I would say. I think like this. I think this is one I shared. Hold on. I shared someone who painted that set. I think. Brandon's gonna pull one up on camera so you can see it. Because we can do that. Even if we're in Amarillo and you're in Florida, and you people listening are wherever you're at. 
this is the box art. Do we have that there at the store? Well, it's Brandon's. Oh. They do have retail versions of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think yours are all Kickstarter ones, right? No, these are all... Everything are I own ones. right now is just retail. They just added more stuff to retail yeah. as well. And I believe we get this through Southern Hobby. Yeah, so... Like, here's the... I want one. Yeah, we, uh, we played Mostly last week against it. Juggernaut, and Juggernaut whooped our butts. No, Put your hand behind him and it might focus. I can't reach that far. There you go. There you go. So there's Magneto. Yeah, so he's purple or pinkish fuchsia because he's a he can be a good guy or a bad guy. All the blue guys are good guys only. They're Cyclops. I just want to paint them. Uh, and then the, all the, the red guys are just oh the bad guys are red. I am gonna have to cut this out of the audio. It's so hard because <laughs> this is <laughs> not playing anything. Yeah, all the people on the podcast are like, thanks a lot, Brandon, for showing us nothing. We can't see it anyway. Like, so now that said, if you were all in on the Kickstarters, you got hundreds of characters yeah. in each Kickstarter. They just they're between just heroes and villains, making them fly out the door. Yeah, so it's a, and it's a fun, it's a fun game. It, it's not super complex. Now, you can add layers of stuff, and it's co op, it which is always nice. Yeah, but there is some competitive, you can do some competitive alternative versions as well. Um, so there's a lot of different game modes and stuff. So yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, so yeah. So, if you are listening to us or, or watching us live, uh, what are you into this week? Definitely comment and let us know, and uh, and maybe we'll talk about it, or you'll tip us on to something that we don't know about. So, definitely uh, do that for us. All right, let's go ahead, and we're going to kind of stay in the in the in the vein. And uh, we're going to talk about our main topic tonight, which is uh, show TV upcoming TV shows that we are uh, super excited about, whether that's continuing seasons or new shows. Um, yeah, so I mean, we just got a trailer for for probably the biggest one of the year. So, so Darren, maybe. What are you Mandalorian is definitely yeah. the one I'm looking most forward to. Uh, for sure, hundred percent. Uh, and then I'd probably say, based on what I saw in the first episode, Last of Us, I'm pretty intrigued by continuing to watch. So, um, so, so, Darren, did you ever go back and watch like all the Mandalorian Clone Wars episodes and stuff like that, cartoon wise? No. Cartoon. You need to. No. I think at, it's, at least the last. I'll do it while I'm with uh, before the Bad Batch comes in. When the Bad Batch comes in, because that kind of explains. I, I honestly, I think, I think seeing like, you know, the House Vizsla rebellion and stuff like that, and yeah, Satine and, and all that, I think it would, I think it's going to play into it. I think Disney Plus actually has a playlist of just those care, like those episodes that you could actually get on, watch on Disney. It Plus. probably has the Rebels ones too. Yeah, it's just like no. I do feel like we've there. there's been a long void in Disney Plus Marvel. Oh, we're getting uh, Loki season two this year. Yeah, She Hulk. We we had yeah. She Hulk a couple couple months ago. Um, Feels like forever. It felt like we were getting one like one would end and one would immediately kick off again. Yeah. Well, they, they did come out and say that they're, and I don't. They really haven't quite changed the schedule yet, but they did say they're going to back off making as much stuff because they feel like people feel like it hasn't been as good. But at the same time, I don't. I think that they're listening to the wrong people. Yeah, I. I yeah. Uh, we should have what Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion's next this year. That's is it next? That's March or is it Loki's? Oh, okay, Loki season two I think is the summer. Secret Invasion is next, which will lead straight into the Armor Wars movie, I guess. Let's see here. Is Every it? Marvel Studios release coming to Disney Plus in twenty twenty three. Here we go. Come on, come on. They're saying X Men ninety something is supposed to come in fall. Yeah, I'll, that's what I was seeing. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Because they haven't said jack nothing about X Men ninety seven. Now, if I if it is legit coming out in twenty twenty three, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, for um, sure. Let's see. We're getting what if season two. Yeah, what if season two is this year as well? Uh, yeah. Secret Invasion is early twenty three. Uh, Guardians, of course, we've got we've got uh, Ant Man coming out. That's not TV though. That's I think Ant Man will be huge. So yeah. it, sh- it should it should really push the entire narrative. Uh, see Echo in the summer. Mm-hmm. Loki in summer. Yep. 
Which I'm guessing Echo is probably going to be early summer, like May. Yeah, and then uh, Ironheart's in fall. X-Men 97's in fall. Agatha's in winter. Yeah, they just started that. Yeah. So I, I bet it comes out 2024, even though it says 23. And then Ahsoka is supposed to be this year as well. And then also the Jude Law TV show for Star Wars Skeleton uh, Crew. Yeah, Skeleton Crew. Which we still have no idea what, th- what that is. I wonder if it's like damage control <laughs> for Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just go and clean up. It's like all the people that are like having to come in after the worlds are destroyed or something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it depends on when it even takes place. Yeah. I don't know that you even have a timeline of when it takes place if it's... I feel like it's got to still be... I mean, it could be in the Andor timeline, and we just don't know. Or so, it's in the regular regular one with uh, the Mando stuff, the Mandoverse or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, they, they, well, I mean, of course, that's in between Endor and, and Force Awakens, or yeah. Return and Force Awakens. So, yeah. I. Uh, oh, by the way, my camera's here. My on, camera's here. On Facebook? Oh, no. Yeah, he's on Facebook. Okay, well. Is that because you messaged him and said, hey, Mike, we're not on He said it's hard to hear Chris. Good. I don't want him to hear me. Okay. Take that, Mike. I think Ahsoka's going to be really good. Mandalorian. Um, Secret Invasion, I feel like they haven't really said a whole lot about. Nope. I think that's the point, though. I think they were trying to get through Ant-Man before they really say anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot coming out this year. I just feel like, I don't know if you guys felt this way. Last year felt very lackluster in the movie theaters, but pretty good for TV shows. I think there was still a lot of hesitancy. Well, we got got Spider-Man last year, didn't we? No, that was actually 2021. Was it really? Yeah. December of 2021. It's okay, been out okay. a year, year and a month now. Yeah, it all blurs together. Yeah, I, I think, again, there was just still a lot of hesitancy from the last couple of years to really do anything big in theaters. But now we've got billion-dollar movies happening again, and I feel like it's all right back on track. So Yeah. Uh, I hope so, because I miss movies. He misses movies. Uh, do me a favor, Chris. Mm-hmm. Say something. Chicken, one, two. Yeah, you're coming through. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing me. Well, but that's the console. I'm just making sure that uh, it's going through out there. That the that the recorder is getting you to. So yeah, the streamer. Um. So yeah. So of course, kind of going back to what I'm into. I'm really excited for Picard, Picard season three. Yeah. Uh, next month. Yeah, it's middle middle of February. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm excited to get to to see a lot. You know. A lot, a lot more of the original cast come back because, because as of what I've seen in season two, I've seen Data, ish, mm-hmm. Riker, Troy, yeah, and I thought Data was real dead from season one. He is. He's that's why I said sorta. Of. You see him, uh, the actor. You see the character, but yeah. not like, not Data. Not in real, real life. Yeah. Um, you see him. It's not like his him. weird twisted brother from the show. Uh, so yeah, you do see him come in season two. I do know that. That's already been spoiled for me. Mm-hmm. So you do see lore. Um, but, uh, and then you see Brent Spiner play other humans, Yep. you know, because apparently th- that entire family's gene seed, like everybody looks identical. It's strong. Throughout, <laughs> throughout, throughout all of history, they all look exactly the same. So my camera says he is excited for Bluey season five. Uh, Bluey is fan freaking tastic and everybody should i don't care if you have kids or not no i don't think it hits if you don't have kids because i think the humor is in being a parent mm-hmm. um but it is such a great show i freaking love it and we like nope. we, qu- we quote it all the time so pass no you you shouldn't be hard-headed about it it's fantastic i will be I think one of the shows I completely forgot about when we were talking about this is the fact that season three of The Witcher is this year, and it will be the the final Henry the Cavill final season. Cavill. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen when Liam comes in there, but it should be really, really good. Yeah. See where they're going with all the monoliths and the world's changing and kind of where they're going to go storyline-wise, if it's anywhere close to the books or they're doing their own thing, or which they've somewhat... Stayed there, so. Um, but if 
Henry Cavill and them really were having that many big of a differences, I'm sure they're probably going somewhere else with it all. So, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is coming. Was House of the Dragon based on a book, or was that just completely a made up by short HBO? story? Short stories, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So he I started watching that yesterday. Yeah, so he did write it. Uh, did you ever watch the main TV show? I thought you never watched. He watched season one. I watched season one. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you don't need to have seen it, I guess. I mean, season it's one, a prequel. Season one, uh, or Dr- Game of Thrones was a little bit about incest. Okay, so House so, of Dragon is only about incest. <laughs> let's let's get into this. Real, let's get into this real quick because I get into this debate a lot. Um, so. Everybody's like, oh, this is a prequel. You should watch it first. Oh, yeah. I don't think it matters. It, no, it does matter. It totally matters. You should watch it in the order they were released because when writers write prequels, there are there's a you lot of exposition. Oh, they were released because... Darren, quit it. Sorry. I was you responding to somebody saying hi. One more time. <laughs> there, there are, there's exposition that writers assume that you have already seen because you've watched other the other stories so there's a lot of times that they will gloss over a certain exposition because it's already known like episode one yes does talk about midichlorians but other than that you know nothing about the force or the dark side or any of this like you have to have just known based on what was said in episodes four five and six so like anytime anybody's like oh you should always watch captain america first avenger before any of the other Marvel movies because it's technically the first. Well, no, because technically the whole freaking movie is a flashback anyway. It's bookmark. It's it's sandwiched chronologically inside of everything else. So technically, no, it is not chronologically the first movie because it's a flashback. So my there you camera, go. are you telling me to go back and watch the what is it? What, what, what show? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can see game. how much he really wants to see it. He's telling you to watch it first. Yeah, I'm just making sure he is the one telling you to go. That back is and watch telling it. me to go watch it. Just don't watch season nine. Just uh, you know, watch it. Watch it all the way. No, it's fine. It'll ruin it. Because there's I've seen there's the, the new episode. snow. There's the new snow show coming out. So snow show. Yeah, because the snow show. The we can call it the bastard show. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like season nine has prevented me from ever wanting to go back and rewatch the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah, I hated it. I'm sitting here thinking about much. different episodes, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't know. That was good. That was good. So I don't know. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in there for sure. Yeah, it's hours and does hours. Boys of season. Does boys season four come out this year? No, but the spinoff comes out this year. Okay, which is uh, whatever their. Uh, their chemicals called uh, compound V or something. It's something yeah. like that that comes out this year. And then of course, uh, well, then they, that comes out this Invincible year is season two. Invincible season two. Yeah. It should be oh, out by nice. the end of the year. Yeah. So there's a lot of good TV shows that are, that are coming out this year. They're completely forgetting about. We may never get another season of Rick and Morty. Uh, Cause he may go to the clank. Oh yeah. I did see something about that. The other yeah. Day. Which apparently that's actually been going on for years, litigation wise. It's just now it's hitting the some, fan. something 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 accelerated, stuck. and now it's newsworthy apparently. Mm. So, but interesting. As long as he keeps making a million dollar TV show, nobody's going to say anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Chad, is there anything? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There's the Power Rangers 30th anniversary coming. Yeah. Uh, I really weird that it doesn't have it Kimberly. Exciting. Yeah, Kimberly's not going to yeah, be a part have... of it. Um, and then you don't have the original Red Ranger, but you have both the first two Black Rangers. Yeah. So, and it looks like they're going to play out that Trini's daughter's in it. Interesting. Like the actual. I mean, that's what it looks like because they have the young Asian girl hanging out with the second Yellow Ranger. So. I'm assuming that they're going to play it out like it's her daughter. So, yeah, I'm not know. real sure. Uh, oh yeah, Night Court's coming back. I don't. That show Chris, looks terrible. I, oh, okay. I don't know that. Like that probably would have been off the air when you were little. Yeah. By the time you were. Yeah. No, it, that it's show all looks terrible. Re- reboots need to stop. 
They are. That's he, all they're doing here. The '90s show that just came on Netflix. Yeah, which I did start watching the first episode of that. And yeah, okay, because here's the thing about reboots: if the TV show was that damn good, it never would have went off the air in the first place. Look at like Law and Order. They never stopped. Uh, because I don't know if keep... I agree with that. I th- I think there's a point where the actors just start asking for too much money. Like Friends, if Friends would have kept going, I think it could have kept going. Like How You Met How I Met Your Mother could have yeah. kept going, but They're I think there came a point to where your your, your lines void. It's now how, how I it's met how your I father. met your father. <laughs> yeah, with Hillary. It's, Duff. it's already been on. It's already on season two. What the? Um, and for it's real? Ex- it's a continue. Yeah. I just it's saw the first ad for it like yesterday. Of, <laughs> yeah. I haven't been doing a very good job yeah, promoting a, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's but it, it's actually a continuation, not a reboot. Just with a female lead versus a male lead. Well, that's weird. Um, the whole show in general, not the fact that it's a female. It's it, but it's like all new characters, right? It's just told in the same style, right? Or is it, uh, is yeah, it, it's kind of. I I lasted about three episodes and got bored. Uh, the cast is not near as strong, um, so I got bored and quit watching it. Was it Greg Hopkins? Service? I think was asking. So yeah, it's on Hulu. I think. Yeah, it's not like a mainstream. And and so that's a lot of it, right? Is is streaming has kind of changed the the playing field for mm-hmm. how much TV can yeah. actually go on the air in a given season, right? You know, you, Warrior Nun season two was great. No, it was not. Fight was too. I liked it. I watched most of it while I was in Singapore because that's how much time I had to do nothing. And <laughs> it was, I, I liked, I watched it. They canceled it already after that came on. It's already been canceled. There won't be any more of it, but. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was okay. The, I think the acting in it is subpar. Overall, it's not a bad show, but the acting is subpar. Yeah, so, I mean, I kind of accept Netflix shows of being sci fi level acting. Yeah. And they're like, um, well, I don't know. You can't say that about all of them. You got like Altered Carbon Most of them. and some of these other ones that are actually pretty good, I think. Yeah. Altered Carbon was good. Altered I, Carbon season was pretty two. great. I never, I actually never watched season two. I, sh- yeah, I totally the, forgot about with it. Anthony I haven't either. Once they changed the main character, I was out. It was Anthony Mackie did a great job. I, I was really sad they didn't bring him back for another season. So, yeah. Uh, my wife and I did. The main guy, the first, go ahead. Uh, so so I, I joke about reboots, but my wife and I also started watching the Criminal Minds reboot, which ish is a reboot. They're actually calling it like season whatever the crap it is. Mm-hmm. It just had like a two year hiatus. So That's I don't like know. the new special victims unit or whatever, right? No, it's no, it's, it, it it's literally Minds? just a continuation of the the main show. Okay. But of course my wife's into, you know, true crime and serial killers and stuff like that. So Yeah. Um Yeah. Hmm. Um she's twisted. I don't know. But uh, I well, I wonder can't. when we're going to get a Ninja Turtles uh, cartoon from the '90s continuation. Well, I guess we'll wait. We'll wait and see how X Men '97 does. Yeah, it's kind of the, it'll do great. It, it better. There was another. Uh, I still wish they'd brought back Wolverine the X Men first. Give me a season two. There's another thing. I'm trying to remember what it was that they said is going to have a TV show now. I was like, man, that makes so much more sense. I'm trying to remember what it was. I may have to come back with it next week, but I just saw it. I also today. agree with Greg in Facebook says there was just too long of a time between season one and season two of Ultra Carbon. Uh, that's the issue so. with all Netflix shows. Yeah, they're very yes. inconsistent with their releases. Yeah. Which they just kind of forget it, especially when they have small children involved in the shows. Yeah. Like the next time the show appears, they're full blown teenagers. I don't know. The gap like, between wait, Mandalorian season two and Mandalorian season three is going to be pretty extensive. Now, you did have Mandalorian season two and a half. Yeah, you had Boba Fett in there. <laughs> Boba Fett. Yeah. <laughs> but I think with their stuff, though, they've got so much other Star Wars content to come in. Like with the Netflix stuff, there's not a universe of other things, yeah. right? It's just that. So the fact that there's not more content coming in is like, why? Kind of a deal. Yeah. Like, why are you getting to that faster? And I, I guess some of that is also the fact that you're doing full-blown hour episodes, right? Not 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So, yeah. But even that, some of those things aren't as detailed or expensive. So you feel like they should be able to get through some of those things faster. Yeah. So. Can we also talk about we may never see Jeremy Rayner's Hawkeye again? 
I haven't seen anything officially on that that you sent the other day. I haven't. Yeah, seen that any, he may be network. have to have a leg amputated. I haven't seen any network. He hasn't said anything about it. He's been promoting his new show. Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. nobody's yeah. actually said anything about that except for one article that you had found. Yeesh. I found a couple articles on it, but I'm hoping it's wrong. Yeah. I, I feel like there would be more out there than I'm sure there's probably a lot of misinformation floating around too. Um, yeah, and I think it's because a lot of people knew that he got his legs hurt in the accident. So they're probably assuming. Yeah. So you know, yeah. if it happens, then him and uh, the Echo Chick will both be amputees together, and it's it's fine. Right. Well, that's right. She was amputee. Well, and, and deaf. Now, yes. is she in real life? Yes. She is. She is deaf and an amputee in real life. Yes. That's, they actually they actually made her an amputee because of the casting, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. The way you just said that, it made it sound like they actually cut her leg off <laughs> to make her <laughs> to get her. She was the only wow, one that would Brandon. sign on to get her leg amputated, <laughs> and she had to spend three years learning how to run on that leg. <laughs> That's commitment. To I the watched role. one. Yeah. Sh- She's a method actor. I was like nobody's business. <laughs> I was watching Good Doctor, and they introduced a new character in this season. One of the interns, and she. Uh, you know, they play it like she has an amputated leg, and then you find out the lady really does have an amputated leg that happened, like, uh, dear, halfway through her acting career, she lost her leg, and that she really, that all of it's real. She really has had to learn to live with it. She's so. just been waiting for that one role. Yeah. It's like, man, I can't Right. Wait. Yeah, the Hawkeye series got a lot of uh, praise for the fact that they actually used the an actor that had both of those disabilities yeah. uh, for that role and not tried to cast it or into something else so does so. echo the echo the character is not an amputee in the comics is she i know she's deaf for sure i'm not she's sure. phoenix now so no, she is fine so she could just she can just grow a new leg that's the thing is she's phoenix could she not just start hearing i want i don't know maybe re- they they took the phoenix away from mutants so i don't care anymore uh <laughs> wow <laughs> She'll get it back. It'll be back. The territory. It'll be the destruction of Kokoa. Something needs to happen. They just did something with Xavier this week. I don't know what it is. I gotta. I guess yeah. We'll out. Well, but like Sinister's. I'm not reading it either, but Sinister's jacking stuff up. I will say the Nightcrawlers team looks pretty cool. All um, the, all the oh, yeah. Versions of Nightcrawlers. They look pretty cool. Yeah. What are the, what are the TVs looking at over there? I'm not. I'm looking to see if Echo is actually an amputee. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so going back to the main topic for me, the top three was Mando, Ahsoka, and Last of Us. Yeah, that was the top three. Cool. Just huh. to clear on what it was. Yeah, my top three is Mando, X-Men. If it comes out in 2023, I'm, I'm putting an asterisk on that. Because I don't believe it. Because I haven't seen anything official. Like you, we haven't seen any screen grabs or nothing. I don't like, even think there's a full. I feel like we, we've cast seen yet, right? some of the art. Yeah, we saw it uh, in 1997. <laughs> 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 I think they're bringing back most of the voice actors who are still alive. Yeah, which I mean, Cyclops is dead. Magneto's dead. Uh, Wolverine and Rogue are alive still. Yeah. Uh, I think, is the voice actor that did Professor X, is he alive? I can't remember. He may be the other one. I think there was like three. There's another one that's still alive, too. Huh? Uh, The guy from Heartland is one of the characters from the X-Men cartoon. So he's still alive. I don't remember what character he played. I don't know what show you're talking about. It's It's a Canadian horse show that my wife watches. Well, mine watches serial killer shows, so <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> so maybe it's like uh, the cartoon. Uh, what is it, uh, Horseland, but for adults? <laughs> I don't know that show either. <laughs> Something I saw. My kids all watched when they were little. Horseland? So, yeah. <laughs> you mean My Little Pony? Nope, it's Horseland. That's what it's called. <laughs> It just sounds like they were. So it's like when there's no magic. It's like when that joke that says that when God gave Adam instructions to name all the animals and he got to fly and he named it Fly and he's like taking this back away from you now, Adam. <laughs> we give up. 
Horse land. Horse land. What was it the, uh, with all the animals? The uh, wild crats? And every time they would name, oh, well, they they'd always suits? give a name to one of the animals. Like, this is a dog, and he's furry. I'm going to name you furry. And I'm like, so now, like, every time our kids would name something when they were little, because they watched that show like crazy, everything was just some kind of adjective. That, that box is blue. <gasps> Bluey. It, you know, I was like, no, you don't have to name everything, whatever it is. Like, you can give it a, a different name. Like, it's okay. Blue, Bluey's a dog. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, healer. but in, just in general. George. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lizard. He licks things. So he's licky. No, no, we're not naming the <laughs> lizard licky. Licky. <laughs> yeah. licky the lizard. Yeah. So the number three for me would be Picard season three. So. Yep. And this is for sure the last season of Picard, right? Yeah, yeah. He's done. They filmed two and three together. So that way it would, it would uh, all finish up and they wouldn't have to worry about, you know, anybody. Yeah. Unless he Bruce Willis is his likeness away. He's. Did Bruce Willis do that? Or James yes. Earl Jones' voice. Yep. So going to James Earl Jones real quick. So um, what's his face? My friend, just Luke Skywalker. Uh, Mark Hill. Mark Hamill. James Earl Jones. He posted on Instagram the other day, like a happy birthday to James Earl Jones. But the way he posted it made me think James Earl Jones died because he was like, thanks for the memories. <laughs> I know, I saw that. And I was all, I'm all like Googling, did James Earl Jones die? And it was like, no, it was his 92nd so, birthday. <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh. So speaking of that, my wife, my <laughs> wife has showed me the, there's a, there's a series, there's like, there's a new trend on like TikTok and Instagram of just going to your parents or going to people and just pretending like celebrities they love or have yeah, died. I have seen some of those videos. <laughs> and just recording their reactions yeah. to their, like, Bon Jovi dead at 56, and just seeing their, like, mom, like, die a little inside. Yeah, they're, and they're like, be freaking like, out and screaming. <laughs> like, no, no! It's like freaking Michael Scott from The Office. <laughs> just, no! So so now, like, anytime I, I say somebody died, like when Lisa Marie Presley died, like, Crystal's like, no, she didn't. And you're like, no, for real. But then, then my wife was like analyzing, and she's like, "That's a random person that you would <laughs> probably, not. Why you would that even matter? To, and I don't you would not. Have, you it. would not have pulled out of thin, thin air. So you're probably telling the truth. So yeah, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that's my three. There cool. we go. All right. Well, what are the top three shows that you are looking forward to in twenty three? Twenty twenty three. That is the year that we are currently in right now at this time. And uh, so be sure to uh, leave that in the comments or in the chat and, uh, and let us know what you are going to be watching. All right. Cool. Well, that was, that was our main topic. So now we are transitioning to Eminem. Eminem. Yeah. Eminem. So, um, so we're, we're going to be doing something a little different and this won't be for everybody, but for, for those that, that do, uh, this is kind of our 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 little. Uh, we're, I'm kind of internally calling it ministry moment, but that's that's not really what it is. It's just kind of our um, kind of our little little small group. Of course, for those that don't know and didn't watch last last week's episode and basically don't know us at all, um, the the three of us we are Christian, and and that's that's just who we are, and and have been for quite a while. And uh, so it uh, uh, it was. Uh, Kind of put on on Darren's heart to to kind of use the 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 tail end of our podcast to kind of have a moment where we can uh, we can fellowship together as such and uh, and so if that is something that uh, that you as the viewer are uh, are wanting, wanting to persist participate yeah. in uh, then then you're more than welcome to so Darren why don't you go ahead and kind of kind of explain your your heart behind this and. Uh, kind of what what you envision this time to be. Since you were driving to Florida last week, you couldn't do this. Yeah. Right. Um, so my, my vision behind this is, so last year it was really out of my heart at church that, you know, we have such a huge platform. We have almost 100,000 followers between all of our platforms. And there's so much negativity in the world um, that we should – be working on bringing some positivity, um, you know, giving people. I mean, that was the whole idea why we opened a game store in the first place, was to give a positive place for people to go and hang out and be a part of a community. Now, most of our business this is online, so that you all are, are our community. And I don't want to neglect our community by just saying, oh, they're online. They don't want to 
they, they don't want this. Right. I mean, that's why it's going to be at the end of the show. It's going to be for those that want to hang out that extra 20 minutes to talk about. You know, we may say the word God a lot. We may say Jesus. We may just talk about emotions um, that we believe that people are dealing with right now. Um, just this week, I've had two people call me. One, pe- one person called me. Her brother-in-law just committed suicide. Um, and he just happens to be in that age group where, unfortunately, he's in the the most dominant age group of men who commit suicide because basically men between 35 and 55 don't know how to talk. And they're the leading group of people who die due to suicide. Um, and a lot of that has to do with there's not enough people willing to say truths yeah. uh, to invest in people. And that's, that's what I want this to be about. Um, that you're not alone. You're not alone in the way you feel. You're not alone in the, you know, the things that you may be working through. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. Um, and this is a time that, you know, you can come in and tell us stories or you can tune in and talk to, to us, talk to us about it. You can send me a message. Um, I deal with depression and anxiety every single day, and uh, I just think that we need, this year is going to be hard, and I think that we need to have more open conversations about how to deal with those things. Yeah, I, and I totally but, agree. But it will, Go ahead, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, this is not exclusive to just other Christians. If even if you're not, and you just need somebody to listen to you, we can listen. Now we are not licensed therapists. Uh, we are not. Uh, we are not professional pastors. Um, we're we're just Christian men, just fathers that are just doing our best. Um, and and we get things wrong. Uh, I'm I'm not a great Christian, but I am one, and and I always will be, and I try my best. Um, at the very, the, the, the best thing I can do is, is I can listen and I can agree with you. Um, not, not, (laughs) and when I say agree, agree with you in, uh, in prayer and, you know, and, uh, and just support. Right. Um, and, and I think that's, so what this also is not, uh, the, this, this will not be theological debates. Mm -mm. Uh, I'm not intelligent enough for that. Um, you know, and, and that, that gets nowhere, right? You know, um, we, we're not here to, to be apologetics for our faith. Um, we, we didn't arrive at this point by, by understanding our faith. We, we arrived at this point just because in our hearts, we felt this is, this is right. And we can't convince you of that, right? So, so that's what this isn't. This is, if if you have a if you have a need um, that that we can uh, listen to you support you and pray for you, then uh, then we'll do that, Chris. And the biggest, no, go ahead. Oh, and the 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 biggest thing that you know we all believe in Jesus, the three of us, mm-hmm. and the one thing he tells us is to love each other, mm-hmm. to love you where you're at. Some of my best friends in the world, they're atheists. They don't believe in God. That's their choice, but they're still my best friends. They're still great friends. And just because we may not have the same belief systems, yeah. it doesn't at all mean that I will ever look at you any different than I already do. I was there. I was an atheist once. So, Yeah. No, for sure. Chris. I remember that. <laughs> the end. I was mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, life sucked, and uh, then it didn't, right? Uh, so it's uh, it's a lot about uh, <laughs> life sucked, then it didn't. Put that on a shirt. Uh, Let's go. And then like underneath it, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. That's on the back of the shirt. Uh, yeah, it's also okay to have fun if you're a Christian, just so you know. Um, yeah, and we I, say bad I, words. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for for us, you know, all of us, you know, we're just, again, like Brandon said, we're just three regular dudes. But you know, you, we you have to have that perspective. Uh, living, living the, living the good life, positive vibes. That's kind of what we're talking about. That's what we want to be here for people for. That's what yeah. we do here at the store. We try to help people grow, coach them, whatever we can. We're not trying to, you know, 
convert or proselytize. No, no, nothing like that. So yeah. I, I think it's just it's just us here being here for uh, the community, and that's what it is. So, mm. all right. <coughs> so what do you got, Darren? Um, the biggest thing I wanted to talk about first and foremost, um, the one thing I see in the world a lot right now is anxiety. Um, it's one of the biggest things that I deal with. It's one of the biggest things that I have to pray a lot about. I have to go be alone a lot to deal with the anxiety that um, I'm going through all the time. Um, I think anxiety is just, it's, it's all over the place. I mean, financially, we're anxious um, the future makes us anxious. Our children makes us anxious. I mean, there's so many things that make us anxious. Um, you know, and there's not a lot that we do to find peace inside of that. We don't know how to deal with the anxiety. Um, I think it's hard and, to hide from it these days. Yeah. It is because it's everywhere. I mean, you know, everything reminds you. To, there's something else in your face about it. So, yes. It's like the only thing you can do is sleep. And even it's there too if you dream vividly enough. <laughs> yeah, which I, which I don't. So usually it's a pretty safe place to go to. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I and I think and I think that's something we we all we all deal with anxiety to different degrees, right? Uh, for some, it's more chronic than others. Um, you know, I I wouldn't say that I suffer from anxiety chronically, um, but I do have moments. Um, I have my own weird crap that I deal with, you know, so we, we all get our own, you know, fun lot in life. Uh, but, uh, what, so let me, let me ask you this, Darren, how does, how does anxiety manifest in you specifically? Um, it will be, um, when it begins, it starts to be not chest pain, but like a chest ache. Then that then turns into my mind racing, and then it turns into my my muscles feel like they need to be like torn from at like they want to just escape like it's all throughout my body like my everything inside of me needs to come out like I just I can't focus I can't think I get jittery I become shaky um, and it can be a lot of things that cause it I mean it can just be a weird feeling that something's going to go wrong and that turns into um, all kinds of cascading things. It could be my wife who knows the rule is don't tell me serious things after 9 p.m. tells me something at 10 p.m. and I spend the, the rest of the night getting worked up. I mean, which means um, your whole next day is full of it as well because you didn't sleep. Correct. I mean, I slept two hours and that was if I fell asleep. Yeah. Um, so it's just, and it can come from anywhere. I mean, it's, it's just all over the place. Um, there's a whole special level of anxiety when you get to be boss over self-employed employees having to worry about what happens to 22 families. Um, but um, it, it's, it, it's debilitating. Like it will, it'll wipe out whole days for me if I don't figure out how to deal with it. Yeah. So. Well, and, 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 and I've always believed this and, and this is of any, any mental health issue. So anxiety, depression, um, they are very real illnesses. And I think, and I think Christians in general get a bad rap that, Oh, you're, you're not praying hard enough, right? You're not, uh, you're, you're not, you're not walking closely enough with the Lord. Um, okay. So that's part of it but that is not the whole picture. Um, so personally, I believe, um, you know, and this, this is a belief that I've had for a while, is we're made in God's image. Well, you can interpret that a bunch of different ways, um, and one of those is, you know, we're not, God just doesn't look like a human. We're made in a God, God's image because He is a, a triune being. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, too, are triune beings. We are body, our, you know, our physical body, we are our mind, which is our our soul and our emotions, and then we're our spirit, right? Um, and that's our that's the eternal part of us. Um, something like a mental health issue, um, it attacks it attacks all three parts of you, right? And you kind of have to have this whole you know whole treatment, right? You have to have 
you can't just focus on one part. You can't just focus on the spiritual part to heal the mental part, right? You know, it's, it's, it's no different than, you know, say you get cancer. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to pray, right? I mean, now there are denominations of faith that do believe that. And guess what? A lot of them die from cancer. (laughs) I hate to say it, you know, but you, you treat, you, you, you get, you get medicine to treat the physical part of it, right? You go to, you go to therapy to treat, you know, like, like taking the cancer analogy with it. You go to therapy <laughs> because your mental health while you have cancer is going to decline, you know, and then you seek out the spiritual part, prayer, you know, spending time with God, spending time with other believers to, to kind of build you up. You have to hit it from all fronts because it's any illness, cancer, depression, anxiety, all that stuff. It's, it's a weed, right? If you don't take care of it in one area, it's going to sprout back in another area. Does that, does that kind of make sense where I'm kind of going with it? Like you have to, you have to hit it from all fronts. You have to, you have to know where, how to work your way out of it. Like with my anxiety, the biggest ways that I have to work out of it is like when it really, like my body really is just freaking out going and exercising, going outside and going for a walk. And then on top of that, I have a special playlist on my phone of songs that help calm me. Um, and sometimes it's literally just crying, like letting yourself cry and go through the process of crying and grieving over that anxiety that will actually allow you to your body to start making that turn much quicker. It's like my depression, the quickest way to depression is laughter. So you have to put yourself in a situation. That's why my favorite shows are How I Met Your Mother and Scrubs. And it's stuff that makes me laugh. Um, because those are the, you, you find your triggers and then you find out your anti, like how to get out of the trigger. So there's this, you know, uh, my wife's been going through a lot of stuff and we've both been learning a lot of things about depression and anxiety and things like that. And it's it's interesting to see, you know, we are animals and, you know, even in the wild, um, Animals that, like a cheetah, let's say a cheetah is trying to run down an antelope, and uh, finally, you know, the antelope is freaking going, gets crazy, has to take off like like a mad person and uh, try to escape the cheetah. Well, once they do that, if they get away, that antelope's going to sit there and shake and shake and shake and shake and shake, right? Because because of what the trauma that just happened to this animal. Yeah. But what we learn to find out is that we are the same way. You know, a lot of times we'll shake or we'll do something at the end of a traumatic event, wherever that may be, whether it be an anxiety attack or some kind of depression or anything like that. And that's your body trying to release those things. So I think it's the same thing, kind of what you're saying right now is that you, you know, eventually you'll, you'll calm down and you'll get through that, but you're, you got to let your body work through those things. So, uh, well, and, and with that, and, and, and yes, we are, we're driving, you know, animal suits, but I believe that, that we are, we are different yeah. in so much that now there's that, there's that aspect of a spirit, right? That is what, that's what makes us different than just any other, um, you know, animal, right? Um, and the, the other My part dog of it, will be in heaven. <laughs> which one? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Anyway. I uh, derailed Brandon. <laughs> yeah. the, the other part of it is we have a very real enemy that attacks us. Heather's sneaking. Look at her. Right. She's just creeping on camera. This is weird. I don't know what's going on right now. I don't do it with my hands. Uh, but uh, like on on top of the, on top of just everything else, like there for for us as believers, there there's an entity out there that is that wants to destroy us, and that's that's not easy. That's not fun. Um, now we do have the Lord as, as our, as our covering and our strength, uh, to, to help us endure that. But it sure doesn't, it sure, it sure doesn't make the, the, the treatment of these chronic illnesses, these chronic mental illnesses any better because, you know, it's, it's in those periods of weakness and high anxiety and depression that he loves to weasel in and start whispering things. Right. Um, and, and basically snowball it, Mm -hmm. you know, and one of the best things that you can find that, you know, we, we believe it's a Christian thing, but it's also just a human thing. Um, and I, I start that off with, so I used to own the store back 10 years ago where people came in and played Yu-Gi-Oh! And every one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! players was a lone wolf. 
Yet they gathered together all the lone wolves to play Yu-Gi-Oh and talk about being lone wolves together. Um, which uh, which is our desire for community. Club. Right. It's our desire of community. And, yeah. And, right. Oh. Um, it doesn't matter what you believe. You need other people. No one is meant to walk this walk alone. Um, you know, and if you do deal with depression and anxiety, the best thing you can do Christian or not, believer or not, is find someone that can you can walk life with and that you can be 100% open and honest with. Like, if your day sucks, you just go, dude, my day is effing awful today. I am falling apart. I can't handle this today. Uh, I'm emotionally hanging on. Because if you don't have that, you're dealing with it alone. And you're, not spend, you're not meant to deal with those things alone. You're meant to deal with anxiety and depression and weaknesses with other people because it's in other people, just like any kind of belief system, that you find strength because when you're weak, they're there to pick you up. Yeah. And that's a, you know, that is what Christianity is supposed to be. But it's also supposed to be what humanity is supposed to be. It's supposed to be in your weakness, someone is there to be strong for you. And so... That was a big reason, like I talk, talked about with Brandon when he was like, yeah, we're going to retool the podcast. And I was like, yeah, I want to add a, uh, a Bible study aspect to it or a ministry aspect to it. And he's like, oh, no, wasn't you wanted expecting to pivot that. the whole thing to a Bible study. This is, this is happening. Yeah. Again. So, um, but, but also I, but my I, camera says, the quote of the night is, we're driving animal suits. <laughs> <laughs> we are driving animal suits. Are you sure? Because I thought it was life sucks and then it got better. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Life sucked, and then it got better. Yeah. That Thanks should be Jesus. the next unknown bundle box shirt. Yeah. Thanks, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, so it could be a Wolverine shirt. <laughs> it just says Lone Wolf Club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, you know, and I will say this is something that, you know, I know that my wife who deals with this goes through on a daily basis is, it's hard when you're in those places because you don't feel like anybody's going through it with you. And so you feel all alone. Mm -hmm. And if that truly is something you're dealing with and just know that you're not alone, there are millions of people that also deal with the same kind of things. And that's, that's for real. Um, you know, even Darren sitting here talking about it and it may, you may not think you need help, but you probably do. And that's okay. Um, what I have to tell her constantly is you're getting help, you're getting treatment. It's like having a broken leg, but we can't see it. You can't just walk on a broken leg and hope it gets better, right? You you have to you have to get it treated, or it's just <laughs> going to get worse. Yeah. So, you know, it's okay. Get help. Find people that can help you. Find that community. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a real thing. That's okay. You're not alone. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a that's a real thing. That, you know, I have to constantly tell her. So I know if she needs to hear it, other people need to hear it too. You know. So. Um, it's it's okay. Yeah, and and for those in Christ, on top of not being you know needing community, you also have the God of the universe walking next to you, you know. And and it's it's really hard when you're in those dark places, you know, to to turn and realize that He's there. Yeah. You know, um, it 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 doesn't feel like it, right? Uh, but uh, but He is so. Well, the biggest scripture, my, my life verse, I learned when I was 23 years old, to find a verse and gravitate towards a verse in the Bible. The and if anything, after. the biggest... Huh? I was going to say, this is the day after you turned. But I was just kidding. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so for me, it was Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious in nothing. But in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, the peace of God will cover, transcend, will cover your heart and mind. I may have said the last part wrong, but, um, you know, and it, it just, it helps me with anxiety to know that there is something on the other side. Yeah. Um, and there's something that is, uh, uh, when I was 23, I knew that I was messed up from my childhood. And I found a guy in my life that took me on and basically became the dad I never had. Um, he's still in my life today. My kids call him Papa Steve. Same with Chris. Um, but uh, 
again, all I can reinforce really in this first time of us sitting here, the three of us together, is community. And it doesn't need to always be just a church. It can be a game store where you have friends. It can be a comic club. It can be places that you, it can be a bowling league, just places where you feel like you belong. And that is where you should be. When you feel like you shouldn't be somewhere and you're super down, that probably means work through it and go because you shouldn't be alone. Yeah. So, and, and I would, I would add exercise wisdom. You also don't want to surround yourself with people that are worse for you. Worse than you. Yeah. Right. Because that, the, the yeah, I mean, don't, don't go, don't go, don't go doing lines of cocaine. Well, I mean, it's just, or, or like if, if that's my community, you know, the, <laughs> the, the worst thing you can do if you're dealing with depression, and anxiety is to hang out with a bunch of people that are also struggling with depression. And exactly. And, and I know we just said everybody struggles with it, but people that are not, let's, let me, let me rephrase, not people that, that are suffering from it, but people who are suffering from it and are not, Take, wanting, taking wanting to steps change. to try to, you know, they, that they're, that they're, they're drowning in it and they're trying to pull other people with them. Right. Um, so right. you definitely want to exercise caution and wisdom in, in, in that as well. So and seek professional help. It's there. Maybe not cheap, but find something, you know, find, find spiritual help. That's what that's that's what I've said is is you would go to a doctor for medicine, go to a therapist for for what they have to offer, go to a pastor for what what's there. You know, there there's there's so many different resources. Use all of it because here's the thing is it's but, it's a nasty disease. You have to you have to fight it everywhere. But the knock on it is the reason why it needs to be more talked about is because we're taught as men we're supposed to always be strong. And there's shame and weakness. And we need to understand that there's there's strength and weakness and it's okay to be weak. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the biggest reason why 35 to 55 year old men are struggling so much is because they hold everything in there. I mean, if a wife asks someone to ask her husband to do something, I'll get to it. I'll get it done. I'll do it. I mean, the, I'll figure it out. And that's, I mean, that's the man's job is to figure it out. But there comes a point where there's so much hopelessness in figuring it out that we we were never taught as children how to ask for help. Now, some were. I know I wasn't. And it was something that, you know, and it could be women as well. It's not just men. I'm just saying that based on what I've worked with in ministry in the past, what I've seen growing up, um, there's just a whole lot of it's, – it's easy to say ask for help. Yeah. But it's it's powerful if you actually – get help. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so. Yep. All right. Well, do we have anybody that is? I, I my camera anybody. says, my camera says for real, there is zero shame in getting help, especially guys. We have to be willing to accept others and their courage to admit their need uh, in a season. And make sure not to mock or shame them and treat them as they aren't man enough. Amen. Totally. Agreed 100%. Totally. So. All right. Well, I will go ahead. And he also. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go on. Mike. Oh, and he also wants a lone wolf shirt. <laughs> <laughs> lone wolf. All right. That's lone apparently. wolf pack. That's apparently going to be a thing. All right, I'll go ahead and pray for us, and then we will we will close it out for this for this evening. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for just allowing us to to gather here, Lord. I I just pray in the in the coming weeks that um, that that others just can uh, can be be as vulnerable uh, as as Darren was uh, uh, this evening, Lord, and we and we thank him, Lord, for 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 showing that vulnerability, Lord, and 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 uh, and and communicating that to us. Uh, Lord, we just, uh, I just pray over Darren, Lord. I just pray for, for healing, Lord, for, for a supernatural healing. Um, one that, that, that doctors can't explain, Lord, uh, that therapists can't explain, Lord, but just a, a, that this doesn't have to be something that he has to live with, Lord, that he has to, to that he has to suffer from, Lord. Um, that something that he's, he's mindful of, but it is not, 
uh, debilitating, Lord. And I, and I pray that for anybody that is suffering through anxiety, Lord. I just I just pray for the courage to uh, for for them to find help, Lord. For them to find you, Lord, um, and 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 find the the help that they need to to eradicate this disease in their lives, Lord. To to eradicate this 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 cancer in their mind, Lord. That that anything that the enemy is saying. That is that is that is pushing them down, Lord. I bind that in the name of Jesus, Lord. Um, that 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 their minds can be restored, Lord. That their minds can be um, just enlightened with with everything that 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 you would have them uh, uh, walk in, Lord. Uh, that they that they can they can be done with this and and just walk in the destiny that you have for them, Lord. Lord, I just, I just uh, thank you for for these men, Lord, and thank you for anybody that is uh, that is watching or listening right now, Lord. Uh, I just pray blessings over them throughout this week, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next week for more nerd talk and fellowship. Uh, so, join us next Thursday at seven p.m. for uh, episode sixty-eight of the Unknown Comics Podcast. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.